Hey guys, Gore here. Welcome back to the channel. In my recent rant video on the state of squad, I talked about the general misuse of APCs in the game. After some inflection, I thought to myself, I can point out issues all I want, but the only way things are going to get better is if someone takes the time to teach people. So today, I wanted to make a guide covering APCs and how best to employ them. If there's enough demand for the coverage, I'll make follow-up guides to this video covering IFVs and MBTs, so if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like and subscribe for more future squad content, and if you'd like to support the channel even further, consider becoming a channel member by hitting that blue join button down below. Now, let's get into things. The first thing I want to get out of the way is the vehicles that I'm going to be putting under the umbrella of Armored Personnel Carrier. In this armor category, we have the Striker, the Lav 3 and Lav 6, the BTR-82A and BTR-80, and finally, the Bulldog. There are a few vehicles that I'll be leaving out of today's guide since they don't have a distinguishing feature from the VIX previously listed, thus you can apply the same knowledge and tactics that will be presented in the video. I know some of the listed armored VIX are technically IFVs, but for the sake of drawing a strict line, I'm going to include all wheeled APCs and IFVs in this video, and if a follow-up IFV guide is made, it will only touch on tracked IFVs. With that out of the way, there are a few crucial points that I want to touch on before we get near any sort of tips and strategies when firing the VIX main gun. First is squad composition and the number of APCs that you'll be rolling out with. The general rule of thumb is strength in numbers. Vehicle fights in squad are often won or lost by who sees who first and who gets their gun on target first. With more vehicles nearby, your potential damage output is increased dramatically, thus enabling you to destroy more of the enemy's armor while keeping your own intact. Now, this doesn't mean you need to have a full squad dedicated to running armor. If you can communicate with other squads that staying close to one another is in everyone's best interest, fantastic. That won't always be the case though, which is why I recommend trying to keep a certain vehicle class, APC specifically, limited to one squad. The minimum requirement for crewmen is two, which is completely fine. However, if you can squeeze a third into one or more of your APCs, you can become an armor squad with a lot more capability. This third crewman can be your ringer. He can sit in the commander seat if the Vic has one to spot targets, he can get out and help with repairs, switch to AT kit off the Vic to help deal with armor, or get on foot to dig down an enemy fob while the rest of the squad provides cover. The next and most important topic in today's video is use your armored personnel carrier to carry troops. I'm going to say that one more time for the people in the back that may not have heard. Your vehicle is called an armored personnel carrier. Use it as such. In my recent rant video, I harped on the fact that squads in this game would rather hoof it a thousand meters than ask from a pickup from an APC, and the APC would rather charge into enemy infantry than offer a ride to infantry squad to get them where they need to be quickly. Every APC that was listed previously has 10 seats in total, so if you're just rolling around with a driver and a gunner combo, you can pick up a full squad minus one. Now there's a handful of reasons to pick up friendly infantry and why infantry should be requesting a pickup whenever they need to move a medium to long distance. Firstly, APCs can carry up to 600 ammo and are equipped with the same ability to change your kit like an ammo crate. Meaning the squad getting a lift can restock everything they need, and the squad leader has the potential to get some of his guys to change kits to fit their new mission objective. Next, I'd like to focus on the A in APC. While APCs don't have the thickest of armor or crazy high survivability, they have a hell of a lot more protection than an infantry squad running in the open. When traveling long distances, infantry are bound to run into contact, which will at best slow them down, or in the worst case scenario, wipe them out completely. So load up a squad and get them to their destination in one piece. Lastly, we have the most obvious advantage, the movement speed. Let's take for example, a travel distance of 1000 meters and see how long it would take for an infantryman to sprint that distance versus the time it would take if they were to load up in an APC. Now terrain can come into play and something like a striker is quicker than a bulldog, but for the sake of brevity in our example, we're just going to compare a player on foot versus a striker. To travel 1000 meters on foot, holding the sprint key the entire time, it would take you 3 minutes and 55 seconds. In a striker, the same distance can be traveled in a minute and 19 seconds on open ground and as little as 51 seconds when on any road. Let those numbers sink in for a moment. Even if you aren't in the immediate area, it's still worth your time and the squad's time to load up and be transported to their destination. And the next time you're trying to pick up troops or get a pickup, these three things should be enough for anyone to listen to the voice of reason. Now there's a magnitude of strategies to transporting troops. You can insert them in flanking positions, drop them right on top of an enemy spawn, or reinforce your defense with additional bodies. The list goes on and on and the possibilities are only limited by your own imagination. There are a couple I'd like to specifically touch on. The first is for AAS and random AAS. 
Many people know the best tactic for winning any advanced and secure game is leapfrogging, where when the flag is captured, the squad that was capped are now on defense, and the squads that were on the previous defense flag are now the attackers. To aid in this, you can pick up one of the defending squads or whomever was on the defense and give them a quick transport to the new attack flag. Whether they have a logic for supplies or not, getting bodies on the next cap will immediately put pressure on the enemy team, allowing you to either secure the objective or give your new defense squads the time to solidify their positions. The other strategy I'd like to cover is incredibly simple, yet I rarely see it used. On every APC, the driver is able to deploy engine smoke, which billows out and create a wall of smoke in a matter of seconds. In a situation where your team has to approach over an open area, you can drop your mounted troops in some defilade, if it's possible, and then drive towards the enemy position, trailing engine smoke to conceal their movement. During this time, the gunner of the Vic can also be laying down fire to soften up the side that your friendlies are approaching from. Obviously, this strategy poses a good amount of danger to your vehicle, but the longer you can keep smoke in your enemy's faces, the closer your infantry can get and the higher their odds are of taking the objective. Moving on, we're now going to get into the actual operation of an APC as a driver or a gunner. For those that have some experience running armored vehicles, you know a good driver can make or break your chances of success. When driving an APC, there are a few things to keep in mind. The first is, use your speed and mobility to your advantage. A moving target is much harder to hit than a static one, so do yourself a favor and don't let yourself stop moving when infantry is within a few hundred meters. If you're in a squad or leading a squad with multiple APCs, you can do drive-bys of objectives. Build up speed and do quick passes on an enemy position. It's incredibly hard to kill the momentum of a wheeled APC, so even if you get your engine knocked out, you can still continue to roll 700 meters away from the danger area. Now, what if you or a friendly gets their engine or wheels knocked out and they're slow to a crawl and very likely to get finished off promptly and getting out to repair is not an option? This is where you can take one of your operational APCs and get behind the injured Vic to push them forward out of the danger zone. I don't know why it works this way, but when your engine is out, you can still upshift your vehicle, meaning as long as the driver of the down Vic is holding W, he can pick up an immense amount of speed when being pushed by a friendly Vic. If you have no friendly Vic nearby and you get disabled, the best thing you can do is look for a hill. You still have a tiny bit of acceleration and you have whatever momentum left from before you were hit, so use one or both to get your APC to a downslope. Once you start rolling down, you can pick up a ton of speed and travel a fair distance away where you can then hop out to repair. There will be times when you post up somewhere with your APC to rain some fire down on infantry from a distance. In these situations, as a driver, your main concerns are gunner depression and the length of time in position. Depression is the ability for your gunner to angle his main gun downwards. When on a hill, your Vic is angled up, thus your gunner won't be able to look over the hill or even see the top of the hill depending on the intensity of the angle. The best practice is to look at the diagram to the left of your speedometer that tells you the pitch of your vehicle. When getting into a position, to ensure your gunner will have depression, try to get your vehicle to pitch flat or angled slightly forward. Additionally, when in a static position, you can look for locations where your Vic will be hull down. Hull down is exactly what it sounds like. It's a position where everything from your hull down is behind cover and the only thing above cover is your vehicle's turret. These positions allow you to inflict damage to the enemy while reducing their ability to damage you immensely by showing so little of your physical frame. When in any static position, especially if you've shot or are shooting at enemy Vix and infantry, you need to pay attention to how long you stay somewhere. It doesn't take long for an enemy to spot, mark, and call out to the rest of his team where you are, so in order to prevent being closed down by AT or another vehicle, change positions often. Moving on to the gunners of APCs, I'm going to break things down into three categories. Auto cannons, large caliber, and small caliber. Not all APCs are made the same, and depending on what the main armament is on your vehicle, your tactics need to change accordingly. APC engagements don't have a ton of variation, so the strategy for winning them is quite simple. For any of the APCs with small caliber machine guns, you should never engage enemy armor as you can inflict no damage to them. The one area you can damage is their wheels, so if you want to cripple their movement speed to either assist your escape or cripple them for friendly armor to mop up, shoot out one or more of their interior wheels. This will act more or less like disabling their engine and will slow them down to a crawl. Next, we have the large caliber APCs, most commonly found in the form of a Striker and sometimes the Lav-3. Oftentimes, Strikers will be put up against Russian BTR-82As and BTR-80s, with your bigger threat being the 82A and its 30mm autocannon. The best practice against BTRs when in a 50 cal striker or a LAV-3 is to aim for the turret first and knock out its ability to traverse. The turret on a BTR has a large hitbox and takes relatively few hits to disable. 
Once disabled, unless the enemy driver is an all-star, the Vic will be essentially dead in the water and you can finish it off easily. One thing to take note of is that the 50 cal will overheat before you can fully kill a BTR if you went cyclic. BTR 82s do not overheat, so if you're in a situation where you run into multiple, you and any friendly Vicks with you need to have the self-control to transition to the other Vic to disable it as well. The next large caliber APC is the BTR 80. It's equipped with a 50 caliber machine gun with armor piercing incendiary rounds. Sounds pretty good, right? Not really. The 50 cal has individual belts, meaning that you have to reload and you don't just have one continuous belt. The gun also overheats. I don't recommend using this thing to try to go head to head with a striker or lav 3. You'll lose. For engagements, your turret isn't stabilized, so to be effective, you need to be static. If you're static, it's best to have 300 plus meters of standoff between you and the infantry you're engaging. On the bright side, the 50 cal is incredibly good at taking down enemy helicopters as the round you fire has a great velocity and it's relatively easy to track a moving bird within the gunner's optic. I recommend using this as your designated troop transport if you have more than one Vic in your squad as it should never be used as the APC that's engaging enemy armor. The last large caliber APC and the only tracked vehicle we have in this guide is the Bulldog. I personally love the Bulldog because it's the only APC that does not require a crewman kit to operate. The turret on it is an open top 50 cal, meaning your gunner is incredibly susceptible to getting his head taken off at any point. This also puts you at a massive disadvantage versus enemy armor. Much like the Striker in Lav 3, your best bet is to aim for the turret of the enemy Vic and disable it before they have the chance to shoot you out of the gunner seat. Finally, we have the Auto Cannon APCs with the BTR-82A and the Lav 6. Equipped with both armor piercing and high explosive rounds, these two are the best for engaging both hard and soft targets. Most commonly, you'll see two Lav 6s against three BTRs or two BTRs against three Strikers. In the situation of the former, the same strategy I've been saying applies. Aim for the enemy's turret first to render them useless and then finish them off. In the latter situation, you can aim for the striker's turret, but I found that unless the striker is close or relatively static, its turret is not the easiest to hit. When facing a striker head on, the engine is in the front left of the Vic, also indicated by the coiled up barbed wire. Disabling the striker's engine will not only cripple the vehicle's movement abilities, but will also cause smoke to plume out of the engine compartment, oftentimes obstructing the striker's eyesight. The last thing I want to touch on, since I know some people will be curious, is the vehicle hierarchy, or to put it more plainly, which Vicks should you engage and which should you turn and run from. For the small caliber APCs, the only vehicles that you should be engaging are Lodgies, Transports, and a Heli if it's static and you can put sustained fire into its tail rotor. For the Striker and Lav 3, you can reasonably engage enemy APCs, armored transports, and soft fix. For tracked IFVs like the BMP2, you can only damage it in the sides and back, so unless you get the jump on one or have multiple VIX, avoid engaging them. For the BTR-80, only engage enemy APCs when you have more powerful VIX in your company, as you cannot win a 1v1. Besides that, armored transport and soft VIX are your bread and butter. Lastly, with the Lav-6 and BTR-82A, enemy APCs and down you can engage and destroy. Additionally, and under the correct circumstances, you can engage enemy tracked IFVs. With the Lav-6 technically being an IFV, you'll often be pitted against BMP-2s, and the BTR will often find Bradleys and Warriors on the opposition. The biggest strength of the BMP-2 and Bradley is their tow missiles. These do, however, have an arming range of 50 meters, so your best bet is to often close the distance to take their toes out of the occasion. Many of the previous strategies still apply. Aim for turrets first to prevent them from returning fire, and then finish them off. To round out the video, I have a couple closing tips. The first is, don't immediately get out to repair if your Vic gets disabled. Especially if you were disabled by enemy infantry, since there is likely someone standing behind your Vic waiting to shoot whomever jumps out to repair. Unless you know you won't get shot or need to risk the repair immediately before something or someone closes you down, secure the area first or wait for friendly infantry to come to your aid. The last tip goes back around to us talking about the fact that you can change kits off your APC. Well, if you get into a fight and are on the brink of death, no need to go down with the ship. Try switching to an AT kit and possibly get a redemption kill on the enemy Vic that beat you. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe for more future squad content. If you still have unanswered questions, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'm out.